Hey guys, it's Guilherme and in this video we're going to see how to create items with random specs. The system that we're going to see here is modular. This means that we can create all kinds of items with it and to do so we are using Godot's resource system. The specs that these items can have can be either mandatory or not and we also have a random rarity for each item. This means that the item can be either a normal item, a rare item or a legendary item and you can add more rarities if you'd like to. Let's begin by going to the random item scene. And this is the scene that you're going to have to inherit from if you'd like to create different items with different types of random specs. You can see on the inspector tab that this node has two exported arrays. One is for the possible specs that this item may have and the other one is for the possible rarities. So in the case of the specs, we might have all sorts of things, for instance, attack, defense, increased strength or critical chance and so on and so forth. And for the rarities, as I said before, in this game, all we have is normal, rare, and legendary, but you might add different rarities if you'd like to. We use an animated sprite to show different sprites based on the rarity of this item. We have a control node here, which is a tooltip that's going to display to us the specs of this item, and we use an RHD to display this tooltip when the mouse is hovering it. Before opening our random item script and seeing how we are creating the item, it's important for us to see how we create the resources which are for our specs and also for our rarity. In the items folder, you find both the item rarity and the spec resource. We are going to begin by opening the spec resource and this is a script that defines the resource that we're going to use for the specs of our items. We have a boolean to define if this spec is mandatory. This means that it's going to always appear on that item. For instance, if you have a sword, we want it to always have an attack property, but we might not want it to always have an increased critical strike chance. And for this, we use this boolean. The chance is just, well, the chance that this spec has to appear on a certain item, the name of the spec, and the min and max values, which are used to generate the value of this spec based on this range. Let's look at our attack spec, and here you can better understand what we mean with that. So as we said, for the sword, the attack is mandatory, and the chance of this appearing is 1, but it doesn't really matter because, well, it's mandatory, so it's always going to appear on the sword. The spec name is attack, the min value is 10, and the max value is 15. This means that when we add this spec to a sword, it's going to have a value between those two values. And it's always going to be there, once again, because it is mandatory. We have another resource, which is the strength increase. And this time, this spec is not mandatory, and we have a 75% chance of this spec appearing on a given item. The name of the spec is increased strength and we have a value between 1 and 3 because we don't want to increase it too much. But again, you can tweak these values based on your game. And then what we do with these resources is add them to our possible specs array on our random items. Now for our item rarity, I'm going to open the script again. And here we have a chance of this rarity occurring. For instance, an item has way more chance of being rare than it has to be in legendary. And this is controlled using this exported variable. The rarity name is just the name of it, for instance, legendary, rare, or whatever you want to call it. The spec multiplier is used to increase the value of our specs based on the rarity of the item. This means that rare items are going to have better specs than items that are more common. And the UI color is just a color that we use to display on our tooltip, which help us to make these items stand out from the normal ones. Now let's open the normal resource and here on the inspector tab and you can see that the chance of this happening is 1 because this is the most common type of item that we have in our game. The name is normal, the multiplier is 1 because we don't want to modify our specs if the item is normal and the UI color is white which is the common color for our items. Now if I open the rare resource you see that the chance for an item to be rare is 40% based on the chance variable, the rarity name is rare and the spec multiplier is now 1.75. This means that our items are going to have specs that are 75% better than items which are normal. And the UI color is blue. And for the legendary, the idea is the same, but again with different values. Now let's open our random item script and see how this is being handled. On the ready function, we call generate, which is going to create our specs and also define our rarity. And after that, we are initializing our tooltip to display the information that we got after generating the specs. Now on the generate function, we are using two functions to get our rarity and also our specs. After doing both of them, we are playing the correct animation on our animated sprite. And if you remember correctly, for each rarity that we can have, we also have a corresponding animation on our animated sprite. 
And that's why we're passing to the play function of our animated sprites the name of the rarity that we got on our rarity after generating it. To generate the rarity of our item, we are looping through all of our possible rarities and for each of them we are checking if our row, in this case a random number between 0 and 1, is lesser or equal than the chance of that rarity to occur. And if that's the case, we're also going to check if the chance of that rarity that we just rolled is the one with the least chance of happening. And with this line of code, we are guaranteeing that we are taking the rarity that has the least amount of chance of happening, or in other words, the one that is more rare. And when we finish this loop, we're going to return the rarity by reaching out to our possible rarities and passing to it the index that we got from our loop. As for the generate specs function, which is going to return to us an array of specs that were generated, we begin by creating a new array that is going to hold all of the generated specs. And for each spec that we have inside of our possible specs array, we are going to continue our loop if it is not mandatory or if the number that we wrote here on our randf is bigger than the chance of this spec appearing on our item. But if we got to here, what we are going to do is create an instance of our spec scene which is a scene that is going to be instantiated for each spec that our item is going to have. We then initialize this new spec, passing to it the spec name, and also an integer which is randomly generated between the min value and the max value that we saw previously on our spec resource, which is then multiplied by our spec multiplier. And finally, we append it to our array of new specs and we return this array. And finally, we have two methods that are connected to the mouse enter and exit signals of our RFGG, which are used to show and hide our tooth. And with this, we have our completed item. Now let's take a look on our spec scene that I just talked about. And it just serves as a container for the specs that our item have. Here the script is already open and here we have that initialize function that we just saw that is used to initialize the values of our scene. Now let's run our game and see what we achieve with all of this. When we click on generate, we're going to create a new item and here we got lucky and generated a legendary sword which has an attack of 29 and increased strength of 4. We can keep clicking to get different items and as you can see, each of them has different properties based on the ones that we define on our sword. Now I'm going to close the game and open our sword scene. So it's going to sit under our items. And here it is. And if you look closely, our sword is just an inherited item from our random item that we just saw. But on its properties, we are setting the possible specs to have attack and increased strength, which are again those resources that we saw before. And the same goes for the rarities. We have normal, rare, and legendary. If we'd like, we could create a new spec for our sword. So let's do that now by going to specs, clicking with the right mouse button and going under new resource. Here we're going to search for spec. And you can see that we have a spec resource here. So we can double click it. We can save it with the name of Richco. So I press enter to save. And now I can open this resource. And it's not going to be mandatory. The chance is going to be 50%, so 0 0.5. The name is going to be critical, the min value 1 and the max value 10. Now with our sword selected, we can increase the size of our possible specs array. So let's set it to 3. We have to also select the type that this item is going to be. And in this case, it's going to be an object. And then we can just drag and drop our newly created resource onto our array. And now if I press F5 to play the game, now as you can see, we got a normal sword that has a critical of 4. Sometimes we're not going to get critical because, again, the chance is just 50%. And you can also see that the values are randomly generated. If you'd like to, you can play around with this demo. The complete code is on a GitHub repository that you can find the link on the description of this video. Please keep in mind that we are using Godot version 3.1, so you're not going to be able to run this project on version 3.0. And also, uh, here we are showing a sword, but you can easily use the same system. You have all kinds of different items, ranging from weapons to armors or defense items like shields and so on and so forth. One thing that we didn't do here, but you are free to do in your own game if you would like to use this system, is to make certain types of rarities unlock certain types of specs. For instance, our critical, we might want that only rare items or legendary items would have this type of spec. So you can easily extend this system and make that happen with what we have in place here. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.